investigation 2.2, we are talking about making and analyzing graphs. What I would like for you to do is to read the top of page 32, <clears throat> where it kind of explains where our college students are and what it is that they're trying to accomplish at this particular point. So from the title, you can kind of see they're trying to find customers. All right, so what we have is we have a table, and we are asked to basically make a graph of this table. So what I'm going to do in this video is basically just get the graph set up. Um, and then after that, you're going to be kind of on your own to finish the graph. And then in the next video, I'll show you the completed graph, and we'll start answering um, some of the other questions. So part A, to make a graph of these data, which variable would you put on the x-axis, and which variable would you put on the y-axis, and explain. All right, so as we've been talking about, our variables are total price and number of customers. Anytime we're given a table, whatever the table headings are, that's pretty much what our variables are. So now the only question is, which one goes on x and which one goes on y? You can't always assume that whichever one is listed first goes on the x, and whichever one is listed second goes on the y. All right, that's a bad assumption to make. It happens a lot of times, but not all the time. All right, so what we have is total price number of customers. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, does the price determine the number of customers, or does the number of customers determine the price? So you have to picture yourself, I'm running a bike to a company. And both scenarios make sense. But which one is more realistic for a business? So if I look at, does the number of customers determine my price? What that basically means is, I start a bike to a company, and I'm going to start on a particular day. I don't know what price I'm going to charge yet because I'm waiting for the customers to show up. And depending upon how many customers want to go on that particular day, we'll determine what the price is. So the more customers that show up, the lower the price will be. The less customers show up, the higher the price will be. Now, in some scenarios, that may make sense. But in business-wise, that doesn't make sense because Customers want to know what the price is before they even think about actually doing it. So in other words, if three customers show up, you don't want to sit there saying, oh, it's going to cost you about you know, $600 because there's only three of you. If you come back on another day when there's more people, it should be cheaper. So you don't want to say that. You want to give customers a hard, a hard fast number. So if we switch it around, where we say the total price is based on the number of customers. I'm sorry. If we say, does the price determine how many customers will show up? So what that basically means is I pick a price ahead of time as the owner, and I send the information out. And depending upon what my price is, we'll kind of determine how many people decide they want to come to me or whether they want to do something else because the price is either too high. If the price is too low, I'm going to get too many people. All right, that actually makes a little bit more sense from a business standpoint. So what that means is on our graph, total price goes on the x-axis. And number of customers on the y-axis. Now, the very next thing that I have to do is, because now I'm working on part B, where it says make a coordinate graph of the data on grid paper. So again, I'm just going to walk through how to set it up, not the actual plotting of all the points. So we're done with part A, so part B. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to first pick what I want to use for a scale. and. I personally, I like to skip lines, but you do not have to. And what I have been saying over and over again is if you're skipping lines, you have to remember to also skip here because this is zero. So zero, skip, one, or whatever the next number is. Okay, but you have to skip. You can't say the first number is right here because zero is a value, so therefore you have to treat it like one. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing for the y-axis. 
All right. Now, one of the things that I discussed with the groups yesterday was how do you figure out a scale? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually walk through the calculation of how we do this. And move this over to here. Okay. So for the x-axis, total price. So total price is x, number of customers is y. The highest value in the x column is 600. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I have 10 lines, so if I do uh, 600 divided by 10, I'll get 6, well, 60, but I'll get 60. So what that means is each line has to have a value of at least 60, okay? I can go higher than that, I can go less than that, it's up to me. So what I think I'm going to do is, hmm, actually I think I will just use 60. So my first line, my first mark is 60, then 120, 180, 240, so what is that? 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 6 times 5, 6 times 6, 6 times 7, 6 times 8, 6 times 9, 6 times 10. All right, that gets me up to 600. All right, for the y-axis, we have to get up to the largest number is 76. Now you'll notice the highest number in the X was at the bottom, the highest number for Y is at the very top. All right, so it's 76. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 lines again. Well, this is becoming real easy. So it's going to be 7 point something. All right, so I have to go at least counting by 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually count by tens. Keep it nice and simple. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I didn't have to actually go up to 100, but I just did. All right. So my scale is set up. My graph is set up. I need a title. Okay, and I have a title. So, my graph is all set up. I have everything listed and I'm ready to start plotting the coordinates. All right, so what I want you to do is once you have this all done, start plotting the coordinates and that will be the start. I'll basically show you the completed graph in the next video.